it isn't the irate gamer. Welcome to my humble shop. What can I help you with today? Oh yeah, hey Sage Elder. Yeah, I'm looking for something unusual, something different. Something that sucks, but doesn't suck too much. Hmm. <laughs> well friend, I might have just the thing you're looking for. Video games? Huh. Well, I guess I'll give it a go. Oh, oh, oh. These aren't just some ordinary video games, because they come with a dire warning. And if you're gonna review those games, well, then you need to see this message from a Gremlins expert. Hey there, this message is for the irate gamer. Holy cow, it's Zack, the guy who played Billy in the Gremlins movies. Hey, irate gamer, play the Gremlins video games, but just not after midnight. Don't play after midnight, huh? Eh, sounds simple enough. All right, let's do this, the Gremlins games. watching video game documentaries like myself, then make sure you check out this one, which is based on game developer Gary Kitchen. Yep, it's that Gary Kitchen, creator of so many of those classic games you all know and love from the 1980s. This well-produced documentary by Carlos Gonzalez is a good one, so make sure you check it out. The movie Gremlins was an instant classic when it was released in the 1980s. Where did you get this? Oh, some little junk store in Chinatown. The movie centered around a rare little mogwai creature found only in the dankest of Chinatown retail shops <laughs> that spawned little green gremlin creatures if you didn't follow the specific rules of how to take care of them. <laughs> Which, of course, all the main characters seem to break. What are they? Well, they're the mogwai, I guess. Got them wet, check. Fed them after midnight, check. Exposed them to bright light, no, no. double check. Ugh. Clean up and out seven. Now what made the Gremlins movie so great was that this little film could be fit into so many different movie genres. Comedy, action, family, horror, in fact, Gremlins could have been strictly a horror movie if it wasn't sprinkled in with these little scenes right here, peppered throughout it. Talk about an instant classic. And seeing these scenes over again today just makes me feel like a kid again. Now sure, this movie was borderline scary for us back in those days, but when you had scenes like this, where Grandma explodes out of her house, the scare factor in this movie was something we were willing to subject ourselves to when it came to these moments. And of course, I wasn't the only one that thought this way because this movie ended up smashing up to $200 million at the box office. And this massive success would lead to huge merchandising deals that involved toys, shirts, and yep, you guessed it, even video games. And the first Gremlins video game to be released was the one for the Atari VCS. Once checking out the title screen, well, it's pretty decent as far as Atari 2600 games go. You have both the Mogwai and Gremlin standing center stage, and then the game goes right into the action. So in this game, you control Billy, which, uh, unfortunately is a poor pixelated representation, since this dude looks more like an old balding guy. Oh, weird. But the point here is to stop those little Mogwais from jumping off the roof and reaching the little hamburgers on the bottom of the screen because once reaching those hamburgers, then they'll turn into those little cocoon demon spawns upon touching them. Huh, what five seconds into this game and we're already into the heavy shit. 
In fact, I don't think even Peter Pepper from Burger Time even faced this much adversity. All he had to deal with were killer sausages, pickles, and eggs with little legs trying to eat them. But I digress. In this game though, you'll have to try your best to keep these hamburgers from being eaten as long as possible because one, to rack up those points, and two, because after the last hamburger is eaten, BAM! All these little boogers turned into gremlins are now raining down on you in a Walking Dead meets Space Invaders type action. And if a gremlin slips through your defenses and reaches the bottom, he'll charge at you and knock your happy ass right off the screen! My god, look at the sheer bruised strength of these assholes! It's off the charts! Now if you manage to kill them all, well, lucky you, you get to do it all over again! So yep, leather, rinse, repeat, all while going faster and faster every time! And of course, as you know, this is the exact formula that caused the video game crash of 1983. So yeah, this game is pretty much a simple concept that'll keep you entertained for a couple minutes or two. Now I know a lot of online game reviewers have bashed this game unmercilessly for the last couple years, but come the fuck on, this game was made in 1984. What the hell are you expecting? I actually did play this game back when it was released, and I thought it was pretty enjoyable. I had no problems with it whatsoever. In fact, looking at this game now, I can tell you that the level design here is pretty darn decent when you compare it to other games like, uh, E.T. Now that shit on a shingle is a game to rant on. Now interestingly enough, when Atari was working on the 2600 version of Gremlins, they are also working on the 5200 version of Gremlins as well. And both games were expected to be released just in time for the movie's release, but unfortunately, Atari went through some huge company reorganizations that caused the 2600 version to be released in very limited quantities and the 5200 version to be delayed until 1986, which ended up causing it to be the very last title released for the 5200 ever. And finding versions of both these games are super hard to find these days. Now, if you didn't like the VCS version of Gremlins, well, odds are pretty good that you'd like the 5200 version. Because in this game, you get to hack and slash your way through dozens of gremlins with this kick-ass sword. And honestly, the graphics on this one look so great, it could even pass as an early NES game. Now the goal here is to grab all these little mogwais running around and put them in this safety box as you defend them by slicing up all the gremlins along the way. Yeah, you want some hamburgers now? Eat cold hard steel, buddy! But if any of the Mogwais end up getting hurt, well, they'll end up turning into gremlins and also try killing you too. Wow, what a happy family-friendly game for kids we have here. So that being said, if you're looking for one fun gremlins game from the Atari age, well, this one really delivers. And I mean, just look at the fun mechanic of this gremlin here that goes over to the fridge and just starts throwing shit out of it. Or how about this popcorn maker down here exploding all over the place? And hell, as long as I don't have to clean this mess up, I say bring it on. And all right, let's see, check out the time here. All right, 1107. I think we have time here to check out Gremlins 2 for the NES. Now fast forward to 1990 and a Gremlins movie sequel had made its way into theaters. The plot of this sequel could have gone off in tons of different directions, but what made this movie so great is that they focused less on trying to be a horror movie and just doubled down on all those crazy comedy beats established in the first film. Now Gremlins 2 was actually a movie I saw in the theater back in the day and it did not disappoint. And what made this movie so appealing to kids was all the different gremlin types that came up with. I swear the guy writing this plot must have been on drugs or something because they were just hilarious. He had the electrical gremlin, the, the plant life gremlin, the girl gremlin, and then of course you had the Batman gremlin. I think that stuck out in my mind the most. The, the gremlin that sprouted wings and then boom, he went through the wall and then the Batman theme. And it was just so iconic at the day because this was the time around when the Batman movie came out and all kids my age were thinking, Batman, Batman. So it just, it was a fun movie for kids all the way around. And when they released this game for the NES, it was a game I just had to play. Now this game ended up being created by Sunsoft. And when it comes to this gaming company, 
boy, they were all over the place in terms of quality. He had awesome hits like Batman, and then crummy shit stains like Uncle Fester's Quest. Oh man, so this one was pretty much a toss up. And upon checking out that title screen, well, we get to see all those familiar faces from the movie. Gizmo, the Gremlin, Funky Kong from Donkey Kong Country. Oh good, they're all here. Next up, we're treated to some pretty amazing cutscenes, which looks very nice for the NES. Especially the pixelated version of Billy here, which looks light years better than that Billy made for the Atari 2600. Oh damn. So in this game, Gizmo starts off by using tomatoes to use against the enemies that come at him. And this apparently pisses off the tomato community, as they quickly end up becoming enemies themselves that you have to kill by the end of the level. Huh, weird. And after killing the enemy, well you'll have items appear like these crystals here, which you can use in these shops. And I myself just love these shops, because of the cool old Chinese guy appearing in this game to sell you his wares. Like these balloons for getting out of pits, potions for healing, and even extra lives. Oh, look at that cute little gizmo doll. And word has it if you insert that iconic Contra code right here, sometimes you'll get lucky enough to get access to that hidden Froger that's buried in the background here. We sell forbidden objects from places men fear to tread. We also sell frozen yogurt, which I call Froger. But beware, it carries a terrible curse. All right, not really, but I just love that classic spoof. I had to crowbar it in here somewhere. Right from the start, the music in this game just kicks ass. And it's mainly because it's a rendition of the movie's main musical score. I mean, just listen to this. Oh yeah. And they also put a little Castlevania vibe in there too, which doesn't hurt anything either. Now the first level here is pretty easy and straightforward. But once you start advancing in this game, you'll quickly find that the difficulty level goes from a mild back massage to shoving double fists up your ass. One minute I'm dodging these little bats, and the next, I'm dealing with bullshit like this where I keep dying over and over again! Ah! Oh, come on! Holy mother of shit bricks! And the game doesn't even ratchet up in difficulty level either. They just throw your ass in the deep end of the pool with an undertow that rips out your damn arms and legs from their sockets while hungry piranha rip out your eyeballs. Ah, you piece of shit. Like here in stage two too, they have these stupid pits that drive you fucking insane. Not only do you need to watch your step around these pits, but the enemy placement of this level sucks stinky ass balls. Ah! I'd rather gurgle piss water and chop off my own ball sack bags and then use them to flavor my tea. Ah! Then you have these swinging spike balls you have to jump over and oh great, I'm dead. But if you think that's bad, wait till you reach the lava. Oh, that fucking lava. Ah! Ah! Bleh! Damn it! Holy monkey of shit, piss fuck tarts! I can't take any more of this! But the painful reality here is we do have more of this. Ten stages in all to be exact, so you better pack some fresh underwear because this shit is gonna get real. Oh damn it, ruined another one. Where the hell was the playtester of these levels when they were building them? Did they just sit there and go, yep, I can't move a fucking inch before dying. Stamp of approval, bitches. Finally, aw, oh, shit. Ugh, this game is so damn hard. And sometimes gets to the point where you actually want to hang yourself. But even though the difficulty level of this game goes completely off the rails in a way that chaps your ass, I gotta say this game is still a damn good game. Now I know there's some crybabies out there that hate whenever I mention the word Game Genie. But look, this game is hard. This game is the perfect example of what Nintendo hard means. But if you want to see the coolest parts of this game, well Sunsoft really saved the best for last. And getting through this game is pretty much a necessity if you want to experience the best this video game offers. Usually Nintendo games of this era would only focus on the main characters of TV shows or movies they were modeled after. And sometimes you'd have a game like DuckTales come along, where you'd see all sorts of B and C-list hero characters show up. 
And this was always a fun and amazing thing to see because it was a very rare thing that happened. It seemed that programmers didn't want to just sit there and pixelate all these different characters into these video games all day. But Gremlins 2 is a rare exception since this game is just sprinkled with all those fun and crazy new Gremlin characters that they introduced in the second movie. And you can only see those in the later stages in those amazing cutscenes featuring other Mogwai. And we also start getting common enemies that include the gangster looking Gremlin, Gremlins with beanie hats, skateboarding Gremlins, those Batman Gremlins, top hat dancing gremlins, and just check out these ending level bosses. Machine gun gremlins, electricity gremlins, which is also included in this badass cutscene. But the creepiest of them all is that spider gremlin, which aptly serves as the final boss of this game. Now that is pretty damn rad. As you play through this game and beat each level and seeing the different cutscenes that appear, it makes you definitely want to keep playing this game up until that final scene, where tons of iconic gremlins are partying, and Billy then comes and saves the day. Alright, we finally get a happy ending with Gizmo and the gang finally sending you off for one great ending. And speaking of Billy, I'm actually kind of curious what Zack actually thinks of this game. So how about it, Zack? What do you think of this one? I was a huge Nintendo guy back in about 1989, you know, Legend of Zelda days. And I was so excited when the Gremlins 2 game came out in 1990. And I think I got an advanced copy. I'm pretty sure that that happened. And I started playing it and I was so excited until I got to like level two and realized it was one of the hardest games I'd ever played. It was like impossible. It was so annoyingly difficult and it got hard so fast. I got really, really annoyed. And in between the two levels, there was a little bit of animation like they used to have in those video games. And it was a shot of me giving like the thumbs up. And I was like, oh my God, that was me giving me the thumbs up in the video game. And it was so cool. It was right up there with like being on a baseball card or being on the lunchbox or it was a uh, was big thrill and it was really exciting. And um, once I saw that, I was like, okay, I can quit now. Because <laughs> it was just too hard and still too hard. Oh, absolutely. Well, thanks, Zach. What a cool guy. Now, the Gremlin video games didn't just stop with the NES because they also made a handheld version for the Game Boy. Now, before getting into this Game Boy title, let me tell you a little story first. One of the very first jobs I ever had was working at this restaurant that served ice cream. And it was cool because you could actually make your own ice cream on your break, didn't have to pay for it, so you can make as much as you want. It was amazing. So one day, yeah, I was making ice cream and I looked over in the corner and I saw a vat of what I thought was whipped cream. I was like, yes, I love whipped cream, especially on ice cream. So I was lathering that all over my ice cream. Oh, my mouth was watering. I could not wait to eat this. So I took my first lick and I about threw up. That wasn't whipped cream. It was butter. I buttered the shit out of my ice cream. And if you play this game after playing the NES version, that's exactly what this game is like. Shitty buttered covered ice cream. And this game, uh, it is terrible. The controls suck, the jumps are unfair, and some of these levels seem impossible without dying several times over. Sure, you do get a little pencil weapon, but just try killing an enemy with it. These constant close range attacks will drive you insane because you'll literally lose most of your life trying to kill one enemy. Ugh, talk about a turd on a Trisket. And if you think this pencil is shitty, check out some of these short range jumps you have to make. You have to be spot on perfect in jumping across this area. Ah, suck it, Gizmo. Now yeah, the graphics look great and the music is awesome, but you can't judge this turd by its toilet because this game's difficulty level pisses all over your socks and then makes you wear them. All right, let's see what time it is now. All right, 11.30. Just enough time to cover those Commodore 64 Gremlins games. And Commodore 64 Gremlins' new batch game is an obscure one that most Gremlin fans don't even know about. This is a 2D platformer where you go screen by screen shooting Gremlins and collecting items. It's pretty simple, and the characters and enemies are both great to look at. And those Gremlin animations, ha, <laughs> just gotta love them when they're shot. I even find this game so refreshing that it's actually a shame that this version of Gremlins 2 never appeared on any home gaming consoles. Now, I would say that they reserved all the cool Gremlins games for the Commodore, but 
That was, of course, before playing the very first Gremlins game for the Commodore entitled Gremlins Adventure, which is actually a text-based adventure? Oh, great, text-based adventure game, just like that Zork role-playing crap on a cracker from the 1980s. Well, at least we got some cool little pictures to go with our text adventure, unlike Zork. But these games always drive me nuts because I hate sitting there trying to figure out what the hell to do next in these games. All right, let's see here. What now? Hmm, find Gremlin? What now? Uh, look at Gremlin. What now? I know, play Tiddlywinks with Gremlin. What now? <sighs> I'm running out of ideas here. All right, let's grab that sword up there. What now? Oh, I know. Kill Gremlin! You've beheaded Gremlin. Head lands in fireplace. Damn, that seems kind of violent for a game in 1984. Well, at any rate, let's just head over to the Game Boy Color, which gives us the game Gremlins Unleashed, which was released only in Europe. Huh. And this 2D platformer gives you the option to play as Gizmo or Stripe. And each one of their objectives vary from collecting sunglasses to collecting bottles, because I guess the Gremlins have now taken up the cause of recycling. And as you can see, the graphics are a bit better here, and the animation of the characters are equally as amusing. You also get colorful backgrounds that fill each level, but unfortunately, most gamers will likely get bored playing this game since the level's exit can be confusing to find. And that's where I'm going to exit this stupid game as well. Ha! Ah! <laughs> oh, cartridge. Now if we head on over to the Game Boy Advance, we find another Gremlins game called Stripe vs. Gizmo, which is another European-only release game that also gives you the option to play as Gizmo or Stripe. Now this could easily become the best Gremlins game in the history of Gremlins games because the colors are amazing, the stages are fun, and the animations are full of life. And we even get tons of appearances from all those great Gremlin types from the second movie. But unfortunately, this game has one small problem that just utterly destroys the entire fun factor of this game. And it's the mother fucking camera pans in this game! My god in video game heaven, from the very first pixel in this game, the way the camera pans and moves around these levels becomes the most nauseating, motion sickening, inducing adventure game I've ever played! What the hell man, keep that shit stationary! Ugh, this camera jets around so much I... <laughs> and can you imagine getting this game for Christmas, playing it, and then passing out from fucking vertigo? What makes such an incredible game that's nearly unplayable just because the camera here suffers from some neurological Parkinson's disorder? They should have called this game Gizmo vs. Stripe vs. My Damn Equilibrium. <sighs> now as bad as this game was, there was actually one that was even worse. And that one was for the Nintendo Wii. And the developers of this game called Gremlins Gizmo must have thought, hey, Nintendo Dogs was a huge cash cow, so let's slap some udders on the Gremlins franchise and milk it for all it's worth too. Well, all that came out of those cow teats was sour gizmo goop because this game is god awful boring. If you came up with a game of painting walls and then had you wait around for the pixel paint to dry, well, that game would be a more pleasant experience than Gremlins Gizmo. I mean, what the holy hell am I playing here? The graphics suck, the execution sucks, the mini games suck, the control sucks, hell, even the box art sucks. Now, the last thing I want to do is end this review on a negative note because earlier this year, we were hit with a major dose of Gremlins nostalgia when both Gizmo and Zack returned together in a Mountain Dew commercial that aired during the Super Bowl. And just as good as the original, but without any sugar. Be careful. Careful. When I saw this commercial for the very first time, I was amazed and I wondered what the story was behind it. So Zach, can you fill us in? We did it in Los Angeles last summer and it, uh, you know, obviously I got a chance to work with the gizmo puppet, animatronic puppet again. I thought that something like that would never happen again. It just came out of nowhere with no warning. 
you know, the whole thing was booked and ready to go within a couple of weeks, shot it in a day. And it just got me thinking about how amazing and random life can be. Totally agree. And what a great way to end this review with such a positive message by Zach. And while we're on the subject, I would absolutely love to see a Gremlins 3 movie made one day because if they can up the ante from what Gremlins 2 was, I am in. Sign me up. And of course with that, hey, look at that. 1159. <laughs> I got everything in right before midnight. Perfect. Oh, hey Chris, you did take into account that Daylight Savings was last night too, right? It's actually 12.59. Wait a minute. Daylight Savings? Oh, shit. Uh -oh. God, I hate Daylight Savings. Ah!